people from the future welcome to normalize nerd so today in this video i'm going to talk about maximum likelihood estimate well this video was actually suggested by some of my subscribers and i hope that this video will be a good learning resource for the rest of you also now before starting please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon i make videos about machine learning and data science regularly so in this video i'm going to be diving into the mathematical details of maximum likelihood estimate and i will also show you how you can use this maximum likelihood estimate method to derive different cost functions in machine learning like the least squares cost function and the binary cross entropy cost function so this is going to be a mathematically intensive video so please turn on your math senses now what is maximum likelihood estimate well this is actually a method for determining the parameters of our model so what the hell are parameters well parameters are those term in the equations of your model which makes it applicable for your particular problem now what does it mean so let us take an example suppose i am taking an example of a linear regression model uh, which we can generally regard as y is equal to m x plus c now this is a linear regression model and uh, this linear regression model can actually be applicable on many cases like uh, predicting house prices predicting future values of a commodity and so on and so forth now uh, what we do suppose we in our problem 1 which is the house price prediction problem uh, suppose uh, the prices are distributed in this manner we can actually uh, get our final line as this one okay and in another problem suppose uh, we have the we have to predict the value of a commodity now suppose in that case we have the data point like this now in this case you can see that the line will be something like that now you can see that both of these lines can be generalized by this formula but this m and c will vary from case 1 to case 2 so uh, this m and c are the values which actually makes our model useful to our particular problems so this m and c are called the parameters of our model okay so i hope the concept of parameters is clear now now what this method does it actually finds the parameters by maximizing the likelihood now what is likelihood well uh, the likelihood is actually defined as the joint probability of a given data for a set of parameters now it is mathematically same as finding the probability of the data where we know the parameters beforehand so mathematically we can write the likelihood of some parameter given the data is actually equal to the probability of the data given the parameters now so what's the difference the mathematically they are exactly the same but conceptually they are not well uh, see in the likelihood case we have the data first and we don't know the original parameters of the data that is we actually don't know which distribution is applicable for this data so we take some uh, dummy mu and we uh, plug into the formula to find the probability of the data for this set of parameters while in case of this probability we actually know the distribution of the data that is we actually know the shape and the parameters of this data and we want to find the probability of some new data in that distribution so we talk about likelihood when we have the data first and we talk about probability when we know the distribution and the parameters first so uh, let me give you another example where the things are conceptually different but mathematically same so uh, uh, let us take an example of an object here and another small object rotating at a fixed distance okay so the radius of this orbit is constant now from our reference frame we can define a force named centripetal force which is directed towards this but from the reference frame of this object we can actually define another force which is called the centrifugal force 
now conceptually they are different but the mathematical values are actually the same so uh, i know that this example is not a very good example for this one but for sake of the intuition i just mentioned this that in some cases it happens that the things are mathematically the same but conceptually different so that is the case for likelihood so i hope the concept of likelihood and the difference between likelihood and probability are clear now well it will be more clear when we take an example okay so let us take an example suppose we have a data containing the scores of some students in a class in a particular test now uh, let me draw the axis containing the scores so suppose this is a 0 this is 50 and this is 100 and uh, we have n number of students and the scores of the students are distributed something like this okay and uh, we want to know what is the distribution of the scores of the students now here in this case it is actually a good guess to assume that the distribution will follow the normal structure that is the distribution will be a normal distribution so uh, i am assuming that this distribution is actually normal distribution with the parameters mu and sigma squared and mu is the mean and sigma squared is the variance obviously and we want to know the likelihood of uh, this mu and sigma given that our data and here i am writing the data as x okay so mathematically it is same as probability of uh, this data given that this parameters now in this case remember that as i have told earlier that likelihood is actually the joint probability distribution so uh, whenever we calculate the joint probability distribution over a set of values we should ideally consider the effect of one point on some other point but if we consider that then the con then the complexity of the computation will increase exponentially and we definitely don't want to do that so for the sake of simplicity what we do we assume that these points are actually independent that is we can actually product the probabilities of each of them so the product will run from i to n probability of x i given the mu and sigma square and if you remember the formula for probability in case of this normal distribution then it is simply as 1 over sigma root over 2 pi and here we will have e to the power minus uh, say x i minus uh, mu squared divided by 2 sigma squared and the product okay so by maximizing this likelihood we are actually going to find these parameters mu and sigma so uh, what we do here we go one step forward and we actually take the log likelihood in this case because it is easier to work with uh, summations in case of a maximization problem than to work with this product so by taking the logarithm we will gonna have log well obviously the base of this log will be natural that is e so uh, log l will be the summation of uh, this one minus uh, here will be log uh, xi minus mu 2 by sigma square and this square and obviously this will run from 1 to n i hope the concept of maximum likelihood estimation is quite clear now and now i am going to show you how you can use this concept to derive some of the most famous cost functions in machine learning models so the first thing i'm going to show you is gonna be the linear regression cost function that is the least square cost function so let's dive into that so here i am taking the most simple linear regression model that we can have that is y is equal to mx 
Now, I'm not taking the intercept term that is C here, but if you include that, the mathematics will be more or less the same. Now, here we need to do a trick that is, we have to introduce an error term that I have denoted here as epsilon. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that the error that is generated by our model follows a normal distribution that too with mean 0 and variance sigma square. So, th this will actually help us to apply the maximum likelihood estimate method. So, we are going to find out the likelihood of our data assuming that we have some parameter m and which is exactly same as the probability of the data given the parameter m. So, uh, it will be equal to the product of this thing. So, as I have mentioned earlier that we do not consider the effect of one data point on the other. That's why we can use the product rule here. And uh, by using the same formula for normal distribution, we have this thing. Now, again, as I have mentioned, we generally take the log of this likelihood. So, uh, we want to maximize this logarithm of this likelihood. So, after applying the log, we have this big thing. Now, uh, remember that we only want to find the value of m. So, to maximize this part is same as maximizing only this portion. Alright? And you can see that we have a negative sign here. So, we can just omit this negative sign. So, we can say that maximizing this is same as minimizing this one. And voila! This is actually the least squared error function that we use in linear regression in machine learning. So, isn't that amazing that following some totally statistical tool, we are arriving at a cost function that is used in machine learning. So, I hope the application of maximum uh, likelihood estimate in linear regression is quite clear now. And let's move on to the logistic regression and the binary cost entropy cost function, okay? Okay, so here I am considering the logistic regression and the general model is as follows. Y is equal to, well, I hope you know this function here. This is actually denoting the sigmoid function by the alphabet sigma. And the H of X is actually some uh, linear function. Now, please be attentive here. So, uh, what does our logistic regression outputs? Well, it outputs a number that can be either 0 or 1. Well, actually, we need to use a condition here. If the output of this sigmoid function is less than or equal to half, we say that the class is 0 and if it is greater than half, then we say the class is 1. So, generally, so basically, our model after doing the condition will output one number 0 or 1. So, we can say that y follows a Bernoulli's distribution with this probability. Now, what is a Bernoulli's distribution? Well, uh, a Bernoulli's distribution is actually a distribution where we have only two values and this experiment is actually called Bernoulli's trials and in each trial only two possible outcomes are there. 0 or 1. Okay. Now, the distribution looks something like this. Suppose uh, these are the values here and suppose this is a value for 0 and this is the value for 1 and uh, suppose this axis represents the probability and the probability of outcome 0 is a fixed one here and the outcome 1 is fixed one here. And remember, and this one actually represents the probability of the class 1, okay? So, if we say Bernoulli uh, 0.6, that means this, there is a 60% chance that our Bernoulli's experiment will outcome 1 and there is a 40% chance that it will outcome 0, okay? So, now we want to find the likelihood as the previous method. So, again, we can use the product formula here. Now, here's an interesting thing that 
the PMF of Bernoulli's distribution looks something like this. Well, uh, don't freak out with this. It is actually very simple. The probability uh, and raised to the power y i and 1 minus probability raised to the power 1 minus y i. Got it? Okay, so now I am again uh, taking the logarithm. Lots of logs, isn't it? Uh, please notice here that I have here replaced this annoying uh, sigmoid of h of x using this term y i hat which denotes the prediction in machine learning generally. So after doing that we have this form here and if we just add a negative sign at front then voila we are actually having this binary cross entropy cost function emerging out of this. So I hope that you are now very confident about the concept of maximum likelihood estimation and how this is used to derive some of the most common cost functions in machine learning and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, share this video among your friends and subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon and thanks for watching.